So, we are we are we live or taping? I'm, so, I'm I'm recording this, so there I'll I'll be able to edit and everything else right. if there's any technical errors. I'm sure any failures. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I tell you, I mean, it, over a year now living through this has just kind of been strange. Yeah. Very. Yeah, I won't be going to WBC this year, though. I'm going to wait one more year. Uh, the first thing I do is I'm going to go to a, so a family event in August, and I'm going to go to a wedding in September on the West Coast, and that'll be my first two, you know, actually yeah. going to an airport and getting in a plane. But the world will be a little bit more vaccinated by then, I'm hoping. It should be. I, I In theory, by mid to late summer, it'll be significant. Yeah, I'm hopeful. Yeah, I, I think we're... Go ahead. Go, go. Well, I, we're holding out hope that we're, we might go to WBC, but we'll see. It depends I'm still if we not get even convinced it'll be on. Yeah, I don't think it will be either, but we're going to try. Hopefully, that'll be our first thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're, they're, that'll be local. I, my own, I won't do any of those kind of conventions until you know twenty twenty two. I'll start to think about you know all that, and you know, like like I said. Um, you know, I know a lot of people have flown even without vaccinations and nobody that I, that I know of has gotten sick from it. You know, like they didn't, they never got COVID. So I think the planes are very clean and reasonably the airflow is pretty good. So yeah. uh, hopefully that will, uh, but like I said, I'm vaccinated. I'll wear a mask and I should be pretty much okay at that point. Well, we need to protect you. You're a, you're a national oh. treasure. So <laughs> <laughs> Every time somebody says you're a national treasure, the next thing is we should bury him. <laughs> <laughs> I went on bury you. Yeah. I like your shirt, by the way. Fire in the Lake. That's nice. I, I wore it special for you guys. I figured there would yeah. be on the shelf somewhere back there. Yeah. Well, right, right here. Right, right there. there. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> Do a little Fire in the Lake. I got the shirt on. Yeah. My copies are not in the basement. One of the things I did do during the COVID, I bought a house because I moved out of the city for the most part. Oh, okay. Oh, edit that out. My allergies are <laughs> tree allergies. I'm allergic to tree pollen, so, you know, it's like I got a lot of trees. I'm living in a, a house uh, up on the Hudson, so uh, okay. of, I got a lot of trees. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of in the, I mean, more countrified up, up by the Hudson I then? Call, I wouldn't call Westchester County. I mean, it's it's certainly some, a, a suburb. But it's a it's a little bit more. It's not like a Queens or Nassau County. It's you know it's got a lot of trees. It's a little bit more you know. It's, I wouldn't call it country, but it's it's very yeah. open urban, you know, suburban or whatever you call it. But it's very nice, you know. And uh, nice. I got my granddaughter and my daughter and son-in-law living with us for the, since last August. They'll be moving out. Oh, okay. Probably. So it's been nice. I mean, having a little girl here all the time is kind of fun. Yeah. I'm sure she keeps you busy with uh, lots of things. So kids are kids are a handful. Yeah. They can be a handful for sure. Well, well, I've got a mother, and, and also she's very, very close to her little grandmother who just left the room a few minutes ago. So yeah. you know she likes. Uh, so I I play with her also. She plays. Uh, we play. Um, we've been playing ribbit. You know more. Yeah. Or less. Yeah, from Hollandspiel. What your game, right? Well, the original. Yeah, I had the original for myself. I self published that one, but yes, Hollandspiel has it now. Much yeah. nicer looking. The, the, the door oh, a open. ghost! That's a ghost. Oh, yeah. well, you know, I have the window open. Is enough, you know. Yeah. Air pressure. <laughs> so, what do you guys want to talk about, huh? What do you want to talk well, about? Well, I, I, I really wanted to just kind of catch up, but I also wanted to, uh, you know, Rebel Fury is a game that has been. I think it's been on the P five hundred for almost two years now, and you know, it's yep. it's got eight hundred and seventy five pre orders, oh, so yeah. it's not doing poorly. I just don't know that we've heard much about it, and it's it's one that I'm definitely interested in. Okay. So well, I wanted to kind of see what the status was. So the status is very, very good. Uh, so the – I can't move the camera. Let's – well, I wish there was a way to – I mean, <laughs> it's right over there, by the way. It's, you know, it's on that table there is uh, – what do Got I it. Is I think Chickamauga is set up. Um, so Chickamauga and Chancellorsville are totally finished. All the rules are done for all the scenarios. Um, I'm finishing up Chattanooga, which is on the Chickamauga map. And um, and I've more or less sketched out Fredericksburg, which is on the Chancellorsville map. So those 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 are very close to done. Mm -hmm. Right now, I've been just waiting to 
uh, get some maps for the wilderness uh, and all that. And you know, my uh, my graphic art, like the guy who was doing the maps for me, seems to be having. Um, he's that's really what slowed it down. So I've already okay. started initiating backup plans. But um, but it's it's the good news is that it literally is in a situation beyond you know, playtesting the scenarios a bit more. Uh, I, I, I if I had the maps, I could finish the whole thing in like thirty days at Got this it. point. So it's well along. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Uh, and if you guys want to play test, uh, I could we could set that up. Well, I, that it would kind of be fun. I mean, it's very similar to your Gettysburg game, right? The low, yeah, so, low counter density and plays in about an hour, give or take. Uh, yeah. Well, these are um, so what it, what I've done is because you know dealing with the whole war, it's dropped down from the core to the division level. So, so the counters are up, um, you know, maybe uh, a factor of three, but the map is also four times larger. Okay. So it's not, you know, and there's no stacking, so it's, you know, it feels very wide open. And, um, and I've really, uh, it, and it's really more of the system has evolved from the original Gettysburg. And so, but just so you understand, the combat system is the same, the whole... Mm -hmm moving sequence everything's identical in that sense but i did a did you play waterloo at all uh we we actually have not played that one together but oh. i know it hurt i know it hurts we've just <laughs> we haven't really played in the last my god i mean we started uh, to play more but just, it's so I'm terrible just, <laughs> I know, it's quite a it hurts game. mark i know <laughs> so, so I would say that Rebel Fury, so if you think about Gettysburg being in the original, Waterloo took the, I really did a lot more interesting things with the, I didn't change the game, but I added more, the HQs are a little bit more significant. It's a very simple set of rule change, but the, the HQs are more significant because they have a maneuver side and a battle side. Mm -hmm. So you, so when you put the HQ over during the HQ placement phase, if you put it in battle mode, like in Waterloo, the uh, command range shrinks substantially but now you have um you get stars that you can oh, okay. yeah 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 so you know so that becomes very interesting mm. and then detachments became a little bit more there's more detachment there's only one detachment in gettysburg which is the um sharpshooters you know the uh uh the 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 united states sharpshooter unit mm. burden's rifles that's what i'm trying to remember burden's rifles in there but now in, in uh in Waterloo, the attachments are more how you shape the battlefield more. So those are the two big changes from the Gettysburg game. And Got so it. Rebel Fury uses that. You know, so yeah. it's so, so so if you so again, Rebel Fury is much closer to Waterloo, mm. but Waterloo is just you know, so it's it's like twice removed from Gettysburg. But like I said, Waterloo, I really liked what how Waterloo came out. In fact, you know, it's one of those designs that I'm, it, it, it's like, it was like I took Gettysburg and I just added just a little bit and it made it like 10 times better in my own mind. You know, like what I thought I got out of it. Nice. Really, Does it still yeah. have that exploding cannonade thing? Uh, yeah. The yeah, artillery? Yeah. So, that was fun. I like yeah, yeah, that so part. That is, so that particular thing is not in Waterloo, but it is in Rebel Fury. So I okay, kept the yeah. artillery. Yeah. 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 And, there's a little bit, and the artillery rules are a little bit more advanced in Rebel Fury, so you can create artillery, you know, you can create artillery concentrations uh, with when a leader's in battle mode, and, you know, the, and it's also now there's leader casualties, which is, always, you know, you got Jackson, so you got to deal with that, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and what I did with this is I literally have rules for, I believe I put rules in for everything that'll cover every battle of Civil War, so some things will be in the rule booklet that, may have zero to very little impact on this particular volume, but it'll only be in the rules for the, for next, next. Or for the next, for the next of them. Yeah. Yeah, for the rest of them. So is so that something, four of, got four of them? Okay. Well, that's what so, I think of. Right now, this one's got like six or seven battles on it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a lot in this package. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I'm real pleased with it. Uh, uh, the one thing I made, the only thing I may change in is which battles will be in this one. You know, I was going to do the uh, Grant's Wilderness and the Overland campaign, 
in Spotsylvania, but I might instead do like, you know, like Antietam or something, you know, keeping it more in the 1862, 63 milieu, I might change the, the mix at this point, but that'll be fun. You'll get the same number of battles. It just may not be the wilderness at this point. Got it. Although I want the wilderness. Well, the, the nice thing about the wilderness is it hangs right off the end of the Chancellorsville battlefield. That's why the wilderness makes sense. So, we'll, well, like I said, we'll see. Uh, but other than that, the system is is pretty much done. And one of the things I was very happy with is Chancellorsville is a very, very hard battle to do. And I think I've done it without any special rules. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, how, so how, 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 yeah, how does the maneuver and different, like different formations that come into the battle and leave the battle, how, how does that work with no special rules? Well, remember, the, remember the, the Chancellorsville that I have, the map covers from, uh, you know, Chancellorsville and actually uh, Wilderness Tavern all the way to Fredericksburg is on the map. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a half mile per, it's a half mile per hex scale now, not a mile per hex scale. So the map is, covers a lot of ground. So you've got all the, you know, the river and all the crossings and, and that one has, and what I introduced in the system is I have, there's an off map movement, you know, capability for, so the union's cutting around and I got very simple. Yeah. Like I said, I, was able to, I don't, I don't layer on a lot of rules that this HQ rule gives me a lot of flexibility of what I can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what other volumes are you looking at then beyond rebel fury? You, you, you mentioned well, I mean, rule. Well, so, so every battle, I mean, so hang on. So I'm just going to get the, the, the okay. The, the yeah. I wish we could see his table. Cause I know he's got 15 games set up that he's working yeah, on. You know it. Well, you actually, know it. That's in the basement. This has only got one. <laughs> this, this, room, this room is my office and I only have uh, rebel fury up in here. Got so, it. So these are your actual rules. They're all done. Yeah. So this one. So this has got Chickamauga, Chattanooga, Chancellorsville, Fredericksburg, and if all goes well, Spotsylvania and the Wilderness will be in this version. Then I have a list somewhere, but you know you'll get. I'm going to redo Gettysburg. You'll have Antietam, okay. you know, Stones River. I mean, name just every every major battle in the Civil War is going to get done in the system. So you know, okay. you know the names of all of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So everything eventually will get done. Um, there's a lot of battles, and the system handles even big and small battles. But like I said, uh, uh, I'm really quite pleased with it. So uh, I wish I yeah. Could... Let me see. The... I see this camera. All right, this may screw up, but let me try something, okay? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how long this cable is. All right. Uh, we're getting a tour of the office there. I mean, we yeah, we can see the map. Yeah, we can, we just can't see this. Give me a second. I'm going to put a light on. Okay. Because otherwise, it's going to be pretty dark. Okay. Let's see this little experiment here. Let me see what, can you see the table? Yeah, it's pretty can, hard to see. No, it's just a big glare. It's so tantalizing. Uh, yeah, it's down there. Well, anyway, down there is is Rebel Fury. Uh, like I said, Chicken Walk is set up. Sorry about that. I, no, it's okay. I, uh, if I had my, if I had got done this on my laptop, I might have been able to maneuver it closer. Sure. But anyway, it's 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 real. It's getting done. And um, like I said, I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, like I said, most battles will probably take, you know, depending on how well you fast you play, but. It's like a ninety minute to ninety minute to play Chancellorsville, you know, which is pretty pretty good yeah. speed. I think. Yeah. And uh, but none of the battles have. Let me see how many. Like Chickamauga, which is a pretty big battle, has. Let's see any pieces. So the Union Army is well, not counting the the leaders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen pieces for the Union Army in Chickamauga. Okay. And I think it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen for the Confederates. And you each okay. got a, a like an HQ and a couple of detachments. So, you know, that's the okay. so again, not a lot of pieces. 
Yeah. And it's a full size map, so there's a lot of open room going on there. Yeah. Well, that was the one thing I liked about Gettysburg quite a bit was the uh, it, it felt a lot like chess. You know, you had some opportunities to to do some fainting and then some maneuver. And I just thought it created a very interesting at that scale, very interesting, I thought, experience. Alexander yeah, kicked my butt, but, you know, we had a good time. Yeah, so Gettysburg has what, like, each side has about, what, six or seven pieces? Yeah, pieces? maybe. Yeah, seven pieces. So basically this one doubles the pieces but increases the size of the map by a factor of four. So yeah. it's got that, you know, so the density is still very low and lots of room to move around and stuff. But the HQs control all that. That's the key piece of this thing is the HQ's control that you can't go wandering off without, you know, staying yeah. within that bubble. Yeah, that which, makes, bubble. which makes perfect sense, so... Yeah. I, I, I really like that system because, to me, it made American Civil War games much more accessible. Because I think a lot of the ones where it's battles like that, you've got the great battles of the American Civil War series, a number of other ones, and there's just a lot in those. Whereas keeping them well, quite they're, simple they're like that... Different. Yeah, well, I was going for something, you know, when Berg did that system, you know, he was going for that regimental, you know, what kind of gun are you shooting, you know, range, you know, and, and it, it does that beautifully, right? You know, yes. and, and of course, they've covered there's so many of the, 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 some of these battles have been covered multiple times in that system now. And I guess yeah. near the end of his life, I think he, there was a group that bought the rights from him, um, so there's a group of guys that are, you know, have financially going to can keep it going. That's why this is still coming out. Got it. Okay. Uh, so that's that was a good thing. Uh, and uh, but this is really meant to be, uh, you know, it's very, it's much more the big picture of the army commander maneuvering his forces, trying to achieve. You know, I wanted to see big sweeps. I, that and that's what you get in Waterloo, also, of course, in that campaign. You get the big, you know, maneuvers to the left or the right, or smashing this way or that way. So it's very, it can be very dramatic, which is what yeah. I was looking for. Combat system is such that, you know, you're going to get results. Um, very few eliminations usually until the end of the game when you can't come back. But you know, mostly it's going to be retreats and broken units, mm -hmm. and broken units coming back. You know, you might be able to get enough of an advantage to you know win the battle, and you know. But I wanted that, I wanted that feeling, and I think the chances of the game really gives you this sense of you know, being hooked around and Lee trying to hold off both sides of this problem. Um, you know, but I had to add rules for like pontoon bridges and, you know, well, very simply done, but just, just you know, when you want to do the civil war, there's a mm -hmm. lot at that level. There's just up. It's really more of a grand tactical operational system. Practically. Uh, I actually started imagining that I could do the, um, that big ACW game that Berg and I always talked about. I could actually use this system to do the whole war. I actually, it would actually hmm. work. So who knows? Wow. But right now I'll just do all the, the battle campaigns hmm. and time together and all that. So I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. And it's just a matter of getting some more maps. And now that I'm in the house and I have my, I have a full size light table now and, you know, I got some capabilities. I can start to make my own, you know, I was relying when I was in the city, I had to rely on some other help. And if that help comes, you know, I'll, I'll continue to use it. But if it doesn't, I'm, I'll, my backup plan is I'm going to do it myself. I don't have yeah. to do it. It's just, it's time consuming. Yeah. Right. Well, cool. I, I think the other thing, and, you know, feel free, Alexander, to jump in and ask any questions. I feel like I'm the only one asking questions. But, you know, one, one game I've been very interested in, and I know you probably have not made a lot of progress, is the Assassination of Julius Caesar game that you've talked about for off and on for a couple of years. Is Is yeah. that one on the back burner or is it? It, it's definitely a. It's definitely on my list. It's a back. Or, it, there's a bunch of uh, small games, but that I plan on doing. And but right now, the big log jam in my life is Pacific War. I mean, yeah. it's it's getting. We're getting there. I mean, like it's finally getting there, and it's going to happen. And so uh, today, in fact, I was just rechecking all the Guadalcanal setups from you know various. I have newer books, and you know, I did that game in 1985, mm -hmm. and so I've read a, you know probably another 50 books or so since then on this topic. So I'm using all of that. So mostly what I'm doing is I've been going through the scenarios and up, you know, updating them 
if you will. But the counters are all made. The map is done. Uh, Kai Jensen's working on the rules. She says she's going to have uh, a rewritten set of rules to me sometime in, you know, like the next 30 days. I would expect to see something. So my hope is to put it to bed, you know, sometime in the midsummer. Mm-hmm. So it'll come out, you know, God willing, it'll come out sometime in uh, by the end, the end of sometime by the end of 2021. It'll, you know, be in people's hands if things go well. Yeah. Alexander, we have to clear our calendar at the end of 21 then. Yep. As, <laughs> as soon as that comes in, if they've cleared the Suez Canal by then. Yeah, right. Right. Well, the good news is when they come from China, they go to uh, Cal- yeah, it California. Goes, it goes from- the other way. I'm yeah, still, yeah, yeah. I'm still <laughs> European in my brain, so all the boats go through that way. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, the Suez Canal. <laughs> yeah, I think, the, yeah, who knows. But, uh, yeah, so Pacific War is coming on. So that's really kind of where my effort right now is. I spend most of my time and on some other projects, but that are not, you know, publishing projects. I have a couple of businesses I'm involved in. But um, yeah, so Pacific War is really the main the main drive right now because I want to. It's just I I can't believe I did this game ever. I can't even believe I did. It. <laughs> <laughs> I was much younger. I was like 34, 33, 34 when I did that game, and it's definitely a game I would not do now. Got it. <laughs> it's pretty but big. Really, well, see, that's the thing. That's you know. So when I sold when we branded the game long ago we branded it as a monster game because that was the thing that was you know going to get us sales back in 1985 but um it's actually not a monster game it's actually a game system of the entire pacific war so you like i said i you could buy this game and never play the campaign scenario i mean the strategic it's called the strategic scenario the whole war uh and you would miss nothing like the main i think the best scenarios are the ones around the solomons you know, you could play Guadalcanal campaign, which is, you know, from uh, August to uh, February of 42, uh, 43. And um, that would take you like kind of like a long afternoon. Hmm. And it would be plenty to, and believe me, it'd be plenty to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you play the whole Bismarck, breaking the Bismarck, uh, you're playing a hunk of the war. It's really, that's what the game was designed around originally. And, and also the big Japanese attack, which is uh, practically a solitaire game. Uh, you know, the big attack really handles it in great detail, battalion level, guys running around and all that. But to fight the war, and now what I've, I have done, though, is I've upgraded the strategic scenario because, you know, I did Empire of the Sun because I couldn't play the strategic scenario in Pacific War. Mm-hmm. So Empire of the Sun is about the war. Uh, but I've taken all of that knowledge of the bigger picture and I've put that now back into this one. So it's kind of like closing that circle. So Got the strategic it. scenario will be much enhanced from the original, but it will still be, you know, you know, a hundred, it'll be probably close to hundred, 150 hours of so- solid play, which is fine for some people, you know, that's what they want to do. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I don't, I played it three times and, <laughs> and it's, it's all, you know, it's, it's a, it's a long, it's an experience, right? It's like, you know, it's, it's like one of those things like someday I'm going to retire. This is what I'm going to do. And then you finally yeah. retire. Plenty, you have tons of things to do, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, yeah, but, it'll, but that's, that's, that's coming along. So it's a monster game in the fact of its number of counters, but mm-hmm. as far as complexity and as far as the maps, only two map game, um, I think it's, you know, it's a solid, you know, you know, it's, it's not a simple, it's an advanced game, but it's not a monster game. In other words, you can play, there are, Tons of battles. I mean, I would say that there's got the game comes with like 23, 26 scenarios hmm. and probably 26. I would say at least 18 of them play in like an afternoon or less. OK. So that's yeah, very, that, very doable. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean is you'll get a lot. Even if you, if you buy the game and you never play the camp, the strategic scenario, you'll get plenty of play value. You know, there'll yeah. be no end of that. Uh, which is what I think most people. I don't think many people played the strategic scenario even since '85. They the people, you know, talk about it, but I don't think they actually did it. Like, how many people do you know? I love, I love the, uh, you know, the uh, Nick Carp's uh, Vietnam game, and I, I, I doubt that, you know, there's a hundred people on the planet Earth who've actually completed a campaign game of Vietnam. You always see people starting, and they always go, "Oh, we got three years in, and we, you know, we, we it, it, the wheels fell off." You know, 
this guy got married or this guy had a baby or <laughs> had something happened. This guy went to prison. You know, he had no <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that game's but, sitting on my shelf. It's it's huge. That's a big one. That's yeah, a big well, one. It, it, when uh, I never forgot, you know, I the it only reason it even has scenarios is because I insisted on it back then, but it still didn't have it. There's about four, maybe five scenarios that you could play in a you know, an afternoon slash day weekend of, but after that, everything's going to be a major commitment of time. Yeah. Which Pacific War does not have, as I said, it's mostly got lots and lots and lots of scenarios. You can look at this war from many, many different ways with the same game system. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. So is it, uh, is it going to, is it going to replace uh, empire of the sun? I mean, the new version or it, I mean, obviously totally different games. But no, no, uh, no. Empire of the Sun is still my jam. No, yeah, it's uh, Empire of the Sun. In fact, I'm playing it, I'm playing it downstairs right now, you know. Uh, uh, no, it's uh, Empire of the Sun is just a different kind of game entirely. I mean, it's a Pacific War, and it it it, and it steals some elements from the Pacific War game, particularly the intelligence action reaction system comes out of Pacific War, but it's much more um, big picture, strategic. You know, like I said, uh, Pacific War is not a strategic game. It's an operational game. Just a lot of it. I mean, you're literally... Uh, the time scale is such that you're getting into tactical situations where, you know, you're firing torpedoes and exchanging gunfire at night in night battles and all this kind of stuff, which is what I wanted then, you know. But then you don't do any of that in Empire of the Sun. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah. That so what you guys so... explain like. Oh, well, sorry. Go ahead, Alex. You're going to ask well, a question. I was going to ask, with, with Pacific War going on and the recent kind of revamp of France 1944, well, if there was like one other older game that you designed that you would want to revamp, what would it be? Um, I got to be honest with you. It's the... I... I'm not a big... I wasn't trying to revamp these games, you know, so I, I'm not one to look backwards and try to bring something forward as much. Pacific War... The only reason that I did Pacific War is because Kurt Schilling, the famous pitcher, asked me to do it, basically. Hmm. And the deal was that I would do the game if he signed my contract, personally. So I actually have a signed contract from Kurt Schilling. <laughs> nice. One of the greatest pitchers of all time. So, yeah. Um, and I want to bet with it, by the way. So I told somebody I had a contract signed by Kurt Schilling, and they said... And they, and they were adamant that I was making it up. And I'd never make up anything. You know, anybody who knows me, I'd never make up anything. That's just not my <laughs> style. So I said, okay, let's, and I literally, I, although I let them off the hook, I said, let's bet $1,000. And they said, okay. And I lost. I didn't take the money. You know? <laughs> but that's how, you know, I got a beer out of it. But, you know, it was that kind of thing. Like, if I'm willing to bet $1,000, you dummy, do you think I don't have it? I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm the only one who knows. I don't bluff, but uh, so that's why Pacific War got done. And it, what ended up happening is it got kicked around by multiple publishers. And after 11 years, I actually just got pissed off. And I just said, okay. And I went to Gene and said, do you want it? And he said, yeah, I'll take it. So that's why Pacific, this is more like, okay, I put 11 years of messing around with this goddamn thing. I want it out there. So that's really why I'm doing it. But uh, France 44 was, uh, you know, you guys know Judd Vance. You know, he just yeah. like a one man uh, wrecking crew on that one. And then Compass wanted to do it. And it will be, and the only reason I decided to do France 44 is because I now get to do Russia 44. Oh, okay. Ah. So you'll be able to play 1944 from both ends coming into the middle of knockout Germany. So it plays the end of the war. And they'll be able to be played kind of concurrently? The maps, one of the, one of the things I insisted on in the contract was we had to do both maps at the same time. So I know they would link up with that. I wouldn't have to worry about that. So we already have the Russia map is done. And a guy named Bruce Garrick is helping me right now with the Soviet order of battle. And, you know, the game system is the game system. So it, it, it could once, once things get kicked around, it'll come together pretty quick. The other thing I've been working on very actually coming along rather quickly is um, we're doing a sequel to Versailles. Jeff and I, Jeff Engelstein and I are doing a sequel called Triumvir, which is Caesar, Crassus and Pompey at the end of the mm-hmm. Roman Republic. So and that's already we've already got a, you know, We've actually got a complete up and like I'm going to start play testing probably in, with the next thirty days. It'll get announced in the P500, I think, in May. Okay. So with how the other 
games in that Great Statesman series are, is that going to be different again, or is it going to be more of a follow-up to Versailles? Much, it's, it's much more of a Versailles um, okay. clone. It's not a clone, but you know, it has its own. It's it's it goes its own way. But it, you, if you know how to play Versailles, you're probably eighty five percent of the way there. Maybe even more. Maybe ninety percent of the way there. And is that That's, a three player game as well? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's it's three player. You know, it's it's Caesar, Crassus, and Pompey, and you're playing from what is it? Uh, like sixty BC to forty four BC. You know, Crassus right. gets killed in there. Caesar event. You know, Caesar wins the civil war. So it covers. You know, it, it kind of ends. You know, it covers all the, the civil war is what ends the game. Basically, you know, there's a crossing the Rubicon instead of the the issue that ends the game is the crossing the Rubicon. So the Roman civil war is not included in the game. Nice. Yeah, I think Gene's been spoiling that one on uh, on the monthly updates, and I've I've been <laughs> guessing. I've been guessing another game, so now I have the answer. So, that's a good <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you guys get the, you guys got the scoop. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I talked to Jeff Tuesday. We we changed how getting how you became an office holder changed how we were going to do it, which is uh, I think an improvement. You know, we're at that point where the game is conceptually done, but we're still moving hunks of things around. Uh, in the game, uh, you have three different kinds of tokens instead of the, the single. You know, you had military and political, right, in Versailles. Now you've got um, military, which are legions, uh, political, which is political, and economic money. And as and and the personalities, uh, instead of them going to the discard, sometimes they become patron. You, they become your patron. That gives you little capabilities. And 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 they give you, you know, if you get a guy who's like a what they call a publicani, he's like a, a commercial guy that helps you in the money side. And the big what they also do is in the uh, Versailles, you would recover, let's say, six and all your military. Now your, your recovery rate is based on your capabilities and your patrons. So your ability to recover assets and. And then, of course, there's office holding, which you didn't have in Versailles. So you could be the consul or a quester or a Dell. And so we were just working on how the elections occur. We, we changed that just recently. But basically, uh, when you're the consul and somebody wins an issue, uh, it could be like land reform, the consul gets a little bit of a kickback. You know, there's a little bit of a benefit. To, and, and of course, there's governorships, which give you extra legions and, you know, that kind of thing, and income. Nice. And then we love Versailles. We love Versailles. We we had such a good time with that one when we played with you, and we also yeah. played with our father in law and brother in law. And man, they had a. They're not war gamers, and they had a great time, didn't they? I mean, I thought they did, Alexander. Yes. Right? It was. Yeah. I think that was the best game we played that day, and we played a few games. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm um, glad to hear that the uh, non gamers had a good time with it. And, and then again, the issues are very much in, in line with you know that period. You know, it's like you know land reform and. Uh, and you know, uh, you know, bread and circuses and things like that is what you're competing for, and that gives you, uh, you know, points and all that kind of stuff. But on the other hand, you don't have, um, you don't have like the strategic tokens. You know, so there's some things that came out, you know, that other things went in. So I would say it's yeah. equivalent uh, mechanically, uh, very similar mechanically. You know, the whole um, things that are in the actual Senate to be voted on, and things that are sitting outside on the the porch, we call it. You know, they're outside the Senate chamber that are sort of working their way in kind of thing is still in there. And, you know, so you'd recognize all of that. And there's five regions where the governorship's tied to, like North Africa and Gaul and Macedonia, uh, Syria, and uh, Hispania. Those are the five regions. Okay. Well, it sounds tasty. That's all I got to say. Yeah, so. yeah. It's going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm very I'm pleased with how quickly it came together. Well, it just so happens that Jeff, besides being a math genius, um, is also had a degree in ancient history. We both have a degree in ancient history, actually. Oh. So, so we're able to have a, you know, it was, our knowledge of it kind of came together pretty fast. Nice. And so has, have, has Jeff played uh, like Pericles? Has he played that one being a history, ancient history buff? Um, 
So here's so the way that Versailles occurred was I was in the place called the Complete Strategist, and it was this guy buying a copy of Pericles that happened to be Jeff Engelstein, and that oh, okay. started the conversation. So I know for a fact that I saw him buy a copy. Uh, okay. Whether he played it or not, I can't. <laughs> But I know I, I know I got my royalty off him, so it's all good. <laughs> nice. That's, that's nice. all that matters. That's all I got my, my three dollars or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that that's a fun game too. We need to we need to get that one back out again. It's been you know, a while. Fact, it's funny, I um one of the little small games I'm working on, like with the you know, um, assassination of Caesar, I've been kicking around a game called the Peace of Nicias, which is gonna be a very small short game just on the period of the peace of Nicias. And, and so I just played literally yesterday, uh, the, there's a, if you play the, um, war in a time of peace scenario, which is a one turn scenario, I just played, that's the peace of Nicias scenario. And I played that one yesterday, literally just to kind of bring my head back into, you know, where the forces were and how it all looked. Nice. Yeah. So what have you been playing? What have you been playing recently for fun? Oh, so it's funny. I haven't done much playing. Well, so the only face that, well, I call it Zoom to Zoom game that I yeah. played. It's literally yesterday. Uh, six of us, you might see, you might have seen it on, my, on the Uli Blenemans and my Twitter feed. We played Westphalia. We've been having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. The six of us, we got four Germans. And you know who Dan Throw Throw yeah. is? Space Biff. Dan is, yep. So Dan and I are the Americans. We got four Germans, uh, good guys that I've come to know. They're very nice. Uh, Christoph, Dirk, Stefan, and Uli, of course, who I've known for like 30 years. And then me and Dan, and we played that. We, that's our second game we played now. We've been playing like once a month-ish, maybe once every five weeks. Okay. So it was really a good – it's a good time game. It's the only the, – the, the good news is it's a six-player game. The bad news is it's a six-player game. There's no – Yeah, yeah. Fifth, there's no option. It's a six or not. It's six or you don't do it. So organizing it's a little bit more, you know, if anybody doesn't show, nobody plays that game. Yeah. Uh, but it's a really clever game. Uh, so we're starting, I'm at the point now after two games, I actually am starting to see a bigger picture about it, which is the, the fact that the game has that in such a small format is, is impressive. So, you know, I, I think he's done, uh, you know, he's done a really good job with that one. And, um, and then I got a cop, and I've been playing uh, Imperial Struggle, which I really, really like. Uh, really cool. In fact, I just finished a game. I was playing solo, uh, but I'm getting ready to play an actual human in the next, like, 30 days. So I've been sort of, like, you know, keeping my, just sort of trying to figure out, like, you know, I played it, I played it enough times now solo, and I played it once with somebody. I'm starting to at least have a, an idea what strategy might look like in that game. It's definitely... Yeah. Uh, a ton deeper than Twilight Struggle. And I suspect yes. that a lot of people, mechanically, it's more, it's definitely mechanically more complicated than Twilight Struggle, which is why I like it. You know, I like it, you know, a lot because I like that the you know, more levers and dials to mess around with. Yeah, you, you got six or seven plates to spin instead of two. Yeah, and also, you know, you've got, you know, you're thinking about, you know, uh, demand, you know, you're trying to score like the, the reason, the, the, the resource demand, you're trying to score flags to score the awards for the theaters. You've got these, uh, special ta- you know, special capability that give you advantages, you know, that you can remember to use to your, you know, into your strategy. And then you have these event cards, which are, I was, in fact, I had a conversation with Jason Matthews, literally, uh, uh last Thursday, uh, we talked sometimes and I told him that I'm still working on how to use Getting an event into play takes a lot of planning because mm-hmm. you've got to got to work like, you know, like a special keyword, you know, like finance or governance or something like that. You've got to yeah. have a circumstance in the board where it'll actually be better than doing something else, you yeah. know, instead of, an, you know, and, you know, just it's just like you've got to balance like three or four factors to make it actually have impact in the game, which is far harder. It's not an easy play. It's not easy to play event cards well in that game. Not that it's, yeah. they're very useful, but. And they're not all, you know, created equal. So, so, and then on top of all that, you got your ministry cards. You got your, you know, you've got all sorts of things going on. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting. Yeah, that, uh, that game's fun. We had a great time with that one. So, I strategy, think I liked it more more than Alexander, but he liked it. We just 
I really liked it. So I want to play it again. We need to play it again yeah. soon. But yeah. Well, I, I think that I'll play it with you sometime if you want. You know, okay. Yeah, that'd be stuff. awesome. You know, the, the thing that I'm starting to discover is I you know, well now that I might play, I'm not gonna tell you what I was gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I at least have I've started to get an inkling of a way to play the game. I think that might be, you know, better than just, you know, randomly throwing shit stuff on the table, you know, <laughs> so, so that's, that's how I play it. That's for sure. <laughs> well, let's face it. You know, I, I was, you know, that's the thing that I find both humorous, pathetic and annoying simultaneously. When I read comments about anybody's game on uh, BGG, you yeah. know, it was just a ton of people, who are happy to say I played it once, didn't like it, couldn't understand what the strategy was. And I'm going like, well, if the game was any good, why would you figure it out on the first try? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The fact that you think that that's what you want is you are in the wrong place, you know, yeah. whatever it is. And, you know, so I, I feel like even with Failure, which has got a, a lot of depth to it, I'm, it's, I'm going on my third, I'll be going on my third play and I'm just now seeing mm -hmm. a, a different story arc than just like, you know, okay, what am I supposed to do? Um, I've, I'm at the point now with Imperial Struggle where I'm past, you know, how does this thing work? You know, I understand how to drive the car now. Now I can start to do, you know, go faster, go slower, you know, do stuff. Sure. And of course, Empire of the Sun, you know, is, you know, when people say like, I did a whole, did you see the video I did on uh, that whole thing with the CBI Blitz? I even wrote a column. Did you get the last C3I? I, I did, yeah. Did you read my column in there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that whole experience with the CBI Blitz, you know, mm -hmm. I wrote about that. I did a video on my, you know, there's a video about, about all of that. So you don't even have to read the article. But I found that even me, who's been playing it for, you know, I would say 17 years, it came out, it's been out now over 15 years ago. And I've played at least two years before it came out, obviously. So for, I've been playing it for 17 years and I learned a bunch of things about the game that I, either knew and forgot or relearned or whatever, but I've come up with, so people will say like, the allies have nothing to do with the game. And I just tell you, that's because you don't know how to play. <laughs> yeah. You don't know how to play. That's why you say that, you know, you know, if you want to play like a goldfish, well then you're a goldfish. You know? I yeah. tell you. So I, I think that that's the thing that I've discovered is that I'm, and oh, in the last game you asked me what I just got, um, bayonets and tomahawks. Yeah. Really good. It's yeah. Real, well, Mark, what's his last name? Rodriguez? Rod Rodriguez. I think it's Rodriguez. I think it's Rodriguez. Yeah, it's not Rodriguez. Yeah. It's Rodriguez. Nope. I met him at a W, um, not a WBC, uh, GMT East, uh, I guess a year plus before COVID. Um, so it'd be about 2018, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had the game. And of course, he's a graphic artist. So the, the, the prototype. It's beautiful. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, and I and I, it, it's reminiscent of all the things I like about it, uh, a few acres of snow. Excuse me, you have to Alexander. You have to edit this out, okay? Yep. <laughs> oh God. Le leave it in, Alexander. I'll, I'll <laughs> zoom in and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it reminds me of all the things I like about a few acres of snow with all the stuff that I don't like about a few acres of snow. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really, I really felt when I played it, I just played it, I've only played it once, so I mechanically played exactly one year of the game, so I, I know how to play it, so don't, but I really got a sense of a board, two empires clashing on a border, it really, um, it really came across, I, I liked it, uh, so I'm definitely going to play that, that one's on the rotation now. Got it. So yeah, that, that, that one's one I've been looking forward to for, I think, since 2017, when it was announced, yeah. I... It just looks so cool that the custom dice, the way combat works, even the different representation of units, I think is so very cool with the uh, irregular yeah. units, kind of the triangles and the, it's just so neat, so cool. So yeah, what I, what I really think was, uh, and again, you know, his graphic skills come through, the, he uses the shapes on the dice, on the pieces, on the cards, and so once you get used to, you know, triangles are light troops and squares yeah. are brigades and circles are either artillery or bastions or fleets, the combat system and everything starts to come together very quickly because everything's graphically integrated. Yeah. I, Reverend Simonson would have, would have 
looked at this and said that that was I, I could tell that Revan would have looked at this and been impressed by it. So, uh, but anyway, I really like the way the game plays, um, and it's got you know real, you know, I, I ended up with a British victory, which just tells you that I don't know what I was doing. You know, I was just playing solid here. <laughs> Uh, my my the, the way I play any game the first time is I just get as many guys in one spot as possible and just move forward and see what happens. <laughs> and that was working. Got it. <laughs> but you know there was probably a lot of counter strategies I could hadn't thought of. Although the uh, the French and the Indians were doing a heck of a job raiding the heck out of the frontier, so they scored a lot of points on that. But it was the conquest, the British getting conquest was what was working really well. So I have to figure out how to counter that strategy. You know, so that's what you get into that cool uh, action reaction thing. So those are the games that I've been playing, um, and of course I've been playing Empire of the Sun, and I've been playing for uh, well, I've been playing for the people as much because I got the new yeah. Curry Leap map, and it's really beautiful. And I just and the only way I can check something like that that I know so well is I'm playing on it, and then you know I look at the space as I move through. It goes that spelled correctly, and you know mm-hmm. that kind of jazz. So I've been making sure that so so far I haven't found any mistakes, but you know I have a sneaking feeling there's got to be one in there somewhere. But I'll put that out to people to look at. You know, you put it out to forty people online, and I'll find out every typo in about yeah. ten seconds. So I'm not yeah. worried about that too much. But it's really nice. Uh, I've been still playing Empire of the Sun continuously. It's a Pacific War. What else did I do? Uh, well, I've been playing Triumvir also. Uh, you know, it's, I think that's it. It's been a good weekend for okay. gaming, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any games on the horizon from other designers that you're excited, looking forward to playing? Yeah, um, I'm really looking forward. I, I've started uh, looking at uh, Atlantic Chase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always been fa- I always like uh, naval games, and uh, and so this one looks intriguing. Uh, I just. You know, I think he's. I think what he's done is the rules and everything, and the and the playbook is really. There's a lot of paper in there, which is good. Yeah. But a lot of playbooks and scenarios and stuff. So, you know, I'm slowly working my way through it. Uh, but I. But as soon as I was doing that, and when bayonets and tomahawk showed up, I was just like, uh, I just immediately jumped into that. So <laughs> it, it was at it was you know one rule booklet instead of you know four. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but well, I uh, just I we just got our copy of Atlantic Chase like a week ago, and I've been looking at the four different books, and there's a lot there. But we're we were going to play it yesterday, but I didn't feel well. I had a, a very quick outpatient surgery about a week ago, and yeah. I just I did not feel like sitting up yesterday, and so I apologize, Alexander. But it happens. Hey, uh, yeah, that would you, know, deal. you don't feel good. It's not fun to do something. Nope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I've recently played. Um, I really like um, uh, Dean Essex. Um, you know, Brazen Chariots, uh, mm-hmm. Last Blitzkrieg, Baptism of Fire system. I really like that system. Uh, I think they. Were, I actually got to send them. I thought maybe the Paper Wars. I wrote an article actually that they published or were going to publish. I just don't know if they did it yet. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I have. I have always found that MMP is communication skills are not not what I <laughs> like. Sure. So I'll yeah. Figure out. Go find out if anything ever Take your word it. for it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll edit that out too, Alexander. Yeah, please, no, I don't, I don't feel like a big uh, pissing contest or nothing. But I, I really like the system. And I played, um, I not too long ago, played the, uh, you know, one of the early, uh, the Northern Front scenario, you know, the Germans attacking on, you know, December 16th into, uh, into uh, you know, the St. Bith attack, you know, in the Northern shoulder. And uh, so I played that not too long ago. So yeah, been like I said, you know, it's been funny. The COVID, I had you. You think you have tons of time, but you spend so much time um, dealing with stuff that you normally, like you know, get it. You have to get a delivery schedule, and you got to you know make sure you have enough food and toilet yeah. paper. It's just a very weird existence. Now that I'm starting to come out of it because I've gotten vaccinated, but you know now, yeah. like, hey, Carol goes, oh, I don't have this. I said. Let's just go to the store. You know, we put our masks on and we went into a, a supermarket and got it. And you know, I'm, we'll be fine. Yeah. But uh, but uh, that's made things a little bit easier. Just being able to go to a supermarket with you know not worrying about you're gonna you know you know get sick and die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We well, we've avoided it and we're grateful for that. So. Yeah. Well, you know what it is is that the even if the vaccine isn't 100, percent which nothing is. 
they're saying that nobody, if you haven't vaccinated, you're you're not going to go to the hospital and die. At least that's the, you know, right. the, you know, and that's all that really matters. Yeah. Uh, but I'm still taking all the normal precautions. It's just I feel like, like I've got this second layer of defense that will keep me alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Alexander, do you have any other questions? Or I mean, we could go on for hours. Yes. I know we could. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to fill up my entire computer's worth of memory. It, we could. <laughs> uh, that's very feasible. Because I would love to hear about every other design that you have. have yeah, thought cooking. About, you know. Well, we're like, going to talk again. I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But hopefully you got enough for, uh, you know, whatever you were looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. We were just looking for a nice conversation with Mark Herman. That's uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You're a good well, like, dude. I, it, 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 I miss you guys. And I it, it will, like I said, 2022 will certainly be in the same room. And of course, once you guys are vaccinated, if you come through New York, come by, we'll play a game. Well, we're going to have to take him up on that, Alexander. Yeah, I know. We're well, going to have to do that. It's funny. We talked about actually planning on doing that. And then, you know, 2020. Well, what happens, you do is, so. see, yeah. if you start, you, um, well, you guys, well, you guys got kids that, so yeah. if you if you can somehow get somebody to watch the kids, and you can, you can take your wives to New York, you can let them loose in New York, and then you can do yeah. it. You can play so we can play. Yeah, I'll be bankrupt after that, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I always hear that from people, but the answer at the end of the day is, is that, you know, wives know what the family budget is, so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably better than us, yeah. But yeah, they yeah. do, because they say, don't buy any more war games. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I got to tell you something. If you think about the hobbies that men could have, right? Like, and I'm just saying, like the word Porsche once. You know, <laughs> you know one Porsche is my entire game collection times like ten. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know there, there are hobbies and there's hobbies. You know, it could yeah. be it could be worse. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I know, I don't know, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen. I know that I've seen your wife, uh, Grant, uh, on when you were, did some sort of you were doing some kind of blog for a while in Fort Sumter, I remember. So she yeah. looked like a pretty, she looked like a pretty level headed uh, woman there. So I, I wouldn't worry yeah. about going bankrupt to New York, but she <laughs> might have some fun. Yeah. She does like to shop though. I think Kelly likes to shop as well. That's uh, Alexander's yeah. wife. So I guess I can say, Carol, I think Carol just went by the, but I, I'll just send her out with Carol, you know, she'll show him where yeah. to go. And, you know, like I said, a little bit of overtime, you'd be good. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we'll we'll try to plan that for next year. That'd be fun. I think that'd yeah. be a blast. Yeah. All and, right. Uh, all right, guys. Well, Mark, we appreciate it. Thank you very very much. My pleasure. Have a great rest of your Sunday evening. And uh, all right. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm going to do now. We're we're heading actually heading into the city tomorrow. We're having some work done on our apartment, so we're going to head into the city to uh, supervise. I guess my wife's going to supervise. I'm just going where she goes as always. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, be guys. safe. Be safe. I will definitely Very do much. that. Be safe. Bye. All right. Thank you.